How's that pitching on? Oh, it's still wondering why I couldn't get that fastball past you, sir. <laughs> Didn't the lieutenant tell you, Sandow? Fastballs are his meat. Oh, it's the curves that bother him. He really fell for that rumor you started, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Special look to Matthews and Barducci, too. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Well, what's up? Me. Court martial. Sure, as soon as I get a Medal of Honor. Hey, no, it's, uh, it's no joke. There was a hit and run accident in Area 19 last night. Somebody passing through on the way to Fallbrook. They claim it was me. You can prove it wasn't you, can't you? First squad looks ragged like you thought so. Shall I run them through again? No, just stand by, Sergeant. Well, go on. Well, there's going to be a formal pre-trial hearing investigation to check the evidence. And you know what that means. If I don't convince them there, I'm ripe for a general court-martial. I've, uh... I've picked you as my defense counsel, Bill. Me? Hey, look, under UCMJ, you've got a right to a lawyer from our legal office. You can get it outside one if you want. Bill, it was my car that did it. It was stolen the night of the accident. Now, the investigators don't believe that. They think I made it up. If, if my lawyer doesn't know me, he might have some doubts, too. What I need is somebody who knows that I wouldn't do a thing like that. Now, now that may not be too hard. For one thing, I didn't leave my apartment at all last night. We just need a way to prove that. Oh, and by the way, I've been restricted to the base. I gotta check into the BOQ now. The code gives me a choice, and... Well, I'm afraid it's you, Counselor. Matter, and I've gotten to know that look by now. It's nothing, sir. You know something about all this? I like Lieutenant Allison, sir. I, I guess I'm mistaken about something. Hey, listen, Matter, and if it's something relevant, I want to hear it now. It's just that I thought I saw him at the Sandcastle, sir. You know, that bar up the coast. So? It was last night, sir. Didn't he just tell you that he was home all last night?
sir. Sergeant Lewis and I'll decide we'll loan you a copy of the manual for courts martial and the JAG manual. And this is the Provo Marshal's report. I think that's all you're going to need. Sir, I think that somebody should be made aware that outside of classroom theory, I've had no experience. Yes, that's all being remedied right now. I think you're going to learn quite a bit this week, Rice. Legal officer will brief you on your duties and guide you when necessary, and the board will take into account your lack of experience. Now, is there anything else? No, sir. All right, now, the accident took place near midnight on the post road leading to the East Gate. The victim is a civilian worker. He works here on the post. His name is Gorson. First name is Albert. He's still in the hospital, by the way. Now, the victim's wife was with him, and she took the plate number on the car, and they found it abandoned in San Clemente this morning, and it was identified as belonging to Lieutenant Allison. Now, when you read this report, you'll note that when Allison was contacted by the Provo Marshal's office, he turned over to them what he stated was the only existing key to the car. Now, our motor transport officer states that Allison's car could not have been started without the key, and it appeared that there had been no tampering with the ignition wires or mechanism. In your opinion, sir, do you think Lieutenant Allison's guilty? Lieutenant, the legal officer has drawn up the charges against Allison, and it is your job to defend him. What I may think doesn't matter. Yes, sir, but uh, of course, car wires can be tampered with. Also, contrary to what you may read in this report, Allison's statement about being home last evening, his landlady is willing to testify that she saw him return to his apartment this morning at around 5.30. Well, if that's the case, sir, then Lieutenant Allison doesn't have any defense at all. No, that's about how it looks. Honey, you shouldn't have left work to come all the way out here. Do you think I could sit at a typewriter after hearing you're in trouble? What's going to happen to you, Jerry? Oh, I'll be okay. They can't prove you did something you didn't do, can they? They'll have to prove I was somewhere I wasn't. Now, come on now, no more worrying. Actually, I'm worrying about very selfish things. Like how long will it be before you can leave the base again? I've gotten very used to seeing you, Jerry. Kiss me. Oh, somebody else could come in. A shy Marine. Next, I'll probably see a purple cow. I want to, believe me. It's just that, well, you're not the kind that, uh, I mean, you know, there are some girls that you can just grab and kiss anywhere, but then there are others who are special. Oh, you've got us all neatly categorized, haven't you, Lieutenant? Enough to know that you're different. How? Come on. How am I different? Tell me, or I'll assault you. <laughs> Is it because I'm like your mother? You said that to me once. <laughs> if it'll relieve your mind, I'm not looking for a mother. I'd... <laughs> I mean, I don't have a complex or anything like that. You know, Lieutenant, being compared with someone's mother isn't generally considered. Isn't generally considered a compliment. It's a compliment. Do I gather you love me, sir? How'd you guess? Well, you must be blinded by something. Otherwise, you'd see I don't compare very well with anyone. I didn't go to college. I have absolutely no artistic talent. I haven't read half the books you talk about. I'm a terrible cook. No, you just happen to be a great cook. Well, in tacos, anyway. <laughs> You're smarter than any cum laude I've ever met. And what books you haven't read, you're going to read. I'm going to see to that. Is that how we're going to spend our evenings? Well, no. That's uh, partly how we're going to spend some of our evenings, though. Now, if you get any better offers, Miss Sharp, you oh, just... Oh, I'll probably get better ones, but none I'd... Oh, you lovely, wonderful square. You lovely, wonderful, decent. That's it, Jerry. Decent. Do you know, can you even guess exactly how rare that is? I'd better get back before the office closes. You'll call tonight? I'll call.
Jerry, buddy, you're up to your ears in trouble. If I didn't do it, there's not but a the thing. But the board will have to go on what they hear. Huh. Well, for example, your statement is that you were in your apartment last night. Your landlady's got a little different story. Look, Bill, if I'm wrong about you, I mean, if you don't believe me... I didn't me, say just... that. Thanks. Look, Jerry, we're gonna be asked questions. We'll need answers. All right. All right, what did my landlady supposedly say? She was up about 5.30 a.m. and she saw you come in. And she probably saw me come back in after I found the car stolen. Well, that's how it happened. I got up early to study for the field mortar exercise. You remember your platoon had them the day before? Yeah, yeah. Well, I left the manual in the car. I went out to get it. The car was gone. Why didn't you report it? Well, I thought maybe one of the guys had borrowed it. It wasn't until later I found out it was stolen. And Jerry, you had the only key to the car. Well, can't you cross the wires or something? You can cross the wires on the kind of car you drive. It'll leave you a mark or a stripped wire or something like that. Well, look, Bill, the car was stolen. I can't explain how it happened, but it happened. Well, did anyone see you in your apartment last night? No. Look, Jerry. Hey. You're not giving me very much to go on. I'm sorry. That's how it happened. Don't you leave him alone? Can't you see when he tries to talk, it's like somebody sticking a knife into him? Mrs. Gorson, I don't want to cause your husband any trouble. We I... told you everything we know. But if it was dark, ma'am, how can you say you saw the license plate correctly? I saw it, that's all. After the car hit my husband, it stopped for a couple of seconds, and I could make out the license number. But it was too dark to make out the driver, ma'am. Look, Lieutenant, we all know who it was. This isn't the first time I saw one of you young officers in your fancy cars going 60 miles an hour without a look to see if somebody might get killed. I understand how you feel, but... In the first place, you don't know how I feel. Here's a man, a good man. He worked all his life. Never saw the inside of a hospital, except maybe to bring some flowers to somebody. And now here he is. And the doctor can't even tell me if he's going to be able to get out of here in his own two feet. <laughs> I realize it. And in the second place, if you officers stick together and try to make out I couldn't see that license plate, I'll swear I did see who was behind that steering wheel. Somebody's got to pay for this. You lie and protect your friend. And I'll protect my Albert. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Some organizer. Let's have a beach party, he says. What well, am my Mother Nature? The guy on the radio said it would be in the 70s tonight. Must have meant body temperature. Besides, you don't listen to everything you hear on the radio. It was an FM station. Hey, look who's coming to the party. Uh, he's the only one dressed right here. <laughs> Folks, you all know Clarence Darrow. Clarence? How come you always call him Bill? Uh, he hates the name Clarence. Wouldn't you? Look, Stan, can I see you for a second? Yeah, sure. Take notes while I'm gone. Sorry to take the life of the party. <laughs> look, I hear a couple of these guys are from Allison's old outfit. I understand they knew him in Quantico. Yeah, Mike was in 2nd Battalion. Why? Well... I've only been with him a couple of months, see, and uh, I thought I knew him, but uh, maybe I better make sure. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Matter of fact, Chris went through training with him too. Chris. Yeah, what's up? Well, I shouldn't even be talking to you. How about filling Bill in on Allison? Yeah, look, I uh, <clears throat> I don't like to talk behind a guy's back, but it's kind of important. Allison picked me to act as his counsel. So what do you want? A character rating? Top 5% of any group you could put together, okay? And if you're asking, would he pull ahead and run? He wouldn't. Now, half a second battalion would give you odds on that. Well, a lot of people seem to think he's lying. Hey, Bill, this guy is so honest, I doubt if he'd even bluff at poker. <laughs> Real white knight, huh? Uh, is that so bad? No faults at all? Hey, I didn't say that. Even I have faults. I couldn't actually name one right now, but... Knock it out. All kidding aside, unless I can help him, he's really had it. Now, can somebody give me something? Okay, you want to hear the one thing I heard against Jerry? 
took that dame out over the PX, and he bored her to death. What, that little blonde? Oh, man, now, if he struck out with her. Hey, I didn't say he didn't like girls. I mean, he's a little shy. Maybe he doesn't really swing. Huh? But uh, if that's a fault, okay, he's got one. But that's the only one he's got. Thanks a lot. Sure. We'll see you later. See you, buddy. Hey, Bill, I like him, too, if there's anything I can do. I'll call you. Sorry you can't stick around, Clarence. Yeah, me too. Hurry back, I'm freezing. Promises, promises. See you in court. Ah, here we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 1035, the president of the board opened the session and made the following statements. This is a formal board of investigation convened pursuant to Article 32 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice and the provisions of Chapters 4 and 5 of the Manual of the Judge Advocate General of the Navy. This is to advise the board that charges have been served on Lieutenant Gerald M. Allison in this state. Lieutenant Allison, have you been informed of your rights as a party to this investigation? Well, sir, we did talk about some of the... I'm addressing Lieutenant Allison. Uh, yes, sir, I've been informed. For the benefit of those who have not participated in hearings of this type, let me point out that our purpose here is not unlike a civil grand jury, being that of determining whether or not sufficient cause exists to recommend that the accused be brought before courts martial. Lieutenant Rice, do you have any opening remarks? No, sir. All right. Lieutenant Markley, you may proceed. Thank you, sir. With the consent of the accused, may we have a stipulation that one Albert Gorson received severe bodily injury due to a hit-and-run automobile accident on April 19th of this year. Does the accused join in this stipulation? The accused agrees to the stipulation. I'm addressing the accused, Lieutenant. You do understand, don't you, Lieutenant, that you are the counsel for the accused, and the gentleman seated to your left is the accused. Yes, sir. Do you agree to the stated stipulation, Lieutenant Allison? Y yes, sir. And this is the same license number you reported to the Provost Marshal's office. Yes, that's it. I have no further questions. Has the counsel for the accused any questions? No, sir. Really? Well, the board has one. By default, I'm afraid. Mrs. Gorson, you stated that you could not identify the driver. But could you tell whether or not he was in uniform? I couldn't see. Thank you. The witness is excused. We'll break for lunch. The board will recess until 1300. Uh, no, make that 1400. <laughs> Lieutenant Rice, that extra hour was for you. May I suggest that you spend it with the manual for courts martial? Guns too loud, Lieutenant? Are your feet sore, or what? No, sir, I'm, I'm just not doing a very good job. No, you're not. I sat in for a while this morning. What is it? The uh, rank on the board, or what? It's not that at all, sir. If this were a minor charge, instead of something that might affect Lieutenant Allison's entire military career, I. What I mean is, Captain, if Allison's defense is amateurish and floundering around, we I We make the assumption, Lieutenant, that any schooled and qualified officer will not flounder amateurishly around in any job to which he can normally expect assignment. Sir, I don't like to see Lieutenant Allison penalized because I fouled up his case. Request denied. I respectfully submit, sir, I'm insufficiently acquainted with procedures and not fully prepared to function as counsel for Lieutenant and Allison. Our blasted few times, Lieutenant, when an officer can come to any task fully prepared. And that's true whether his name is McAuliffe, or Puller, or even Rice. 
Now, if you are laboring under the delusion there's some sort of exact military science involving fully prepared leaders, complete information, and ideal conditions, forget about it right now, mister. Battles are won by men who can reach down inside themselves and find something. Ingenuity, resourcefulness, something that tips the balance, regardless of preparation, odds, equipment, position, or even experience. We call that leadership, Rice. Now, I would suggest that you start showing some. Sergeant, can you identify this key? Yes, sir. That's the automobile key that Lieutenant Allison gave me when we went to his apartment. Did you ask Lieutenant Allison if there were any other keys to his car? He said there were no other keys to his car. Thank you. I have no further questions. In your experience as a military policeman, wouldn't you consider such an admission rather stupid if Lieutenant Allison were actually trying to hide his guilt? Wouldn't he be better off to state there were other keys lying around so it could be assumed? Objection. This is argumentative and calls for an opinion on guilt or innocence. Sustained. But Lieutenant Allison did openly and freely volunteer to you that he had only one key. Yes, sir. No further questions. Just a minute, ma'am, the swearing in the next witness. Why didn't we come inside? Oh, God, it's an open hearing. I can get you a seat. I don't think that would be very wise, do you? What's happening? Is it going to be difficult for you? It's going to be all right. Is it really? Please, tell me the truth. Now, look, hon, I've got to get right back inside. They can't prove I did anything that I didn't do. So don't you worry. I'm going to call you the minute they adjourn tonight. Come on. I don't think so. Uh, do you know Jerry? Uh, Lieutenant Allison? Yes. I'm a friend of his. Can you tell me how it looks for him? Things could be going better. Thank you. Did you manage the apartment at that address? Yes, the Oasis Apartments. Where in the building is your apartment located? On the second floor to the left as you enter. It faces the street, if that's what you mean. That's what I mean. Do you know Lieutenant Gerald Allison? Yes, I do. Would you point him out, please? That's him, right there. May the record show that the witness indicated the accused. Now, did you see the accused on the morning of April 20th? Yes, I did. Will you tell us the circumstances, please? Certainly. It was about um, 5.30 in the morning. You know how cold it's been lately. Well, I woke up shivering something awful. I got up to turn on the heat. My wall thermostat's not working too well. Anything the tenants want, fine. The owner gets it for them right away, but not for me. I'm just the manager. We understand. Uh, you got up to turn on the heat? Yes. I heard this noise in the street. I looked out and I saw Lieutenant Allison come up the front steps and go into his apartment. Thank you. Counselor. <clears throat> Isn't it possible, Mrs. Lanyard, that Lieutenant Allison had gone to his car in the garage apartment area, found it missing and had come back to his apartment and that's when you saw him? I don't think so. Well, you're assuming that's not the case. I'm not assuming anything. You see, the noise that brought me to the window was a car door slamming. It was Lieutenant Allison getting out of a taxi cab. No further questions. Oh, boy. 
Well, go ahead. Say it. You say it. Was she lying about the taxi, too? No. The white knight. What does that mean? Oh, come on, Jerry. Were you lying about the accident, too? No. You want to see me? Yeah. Jerry, I want you to relieve me as counsel. I want Stan here to witness it. I didn't hit that man. I give you my word. I've already had your word. Bill, I wouldn't have lied to you if it wasn't important. Look, I'm not stupid. I know the worst thing I can do is lie to my counsel. But you've got to believe that I had a reason for it. it. It doesn't even matter whether or not I'm guilty. It has nothing to do with that. Well, where were you that night and why the taxi? Huh? It wouldn't be right to tell you, Bill. Please believe I've me. I've got to know, Jerry. I've got to know. I'm telling you, it's personal business. You've made it mine, too. Hey, this is the one in the hearing room corridor this morning. Hey, you do swing a little, huh? On the sly? What do you mean? Oh, come on, don't try to fool Uncle Stan. Well, what are you talking about? The girl in the picture. I've been going nuts trying to figure out where I saw her before. She's none of your business. What's the matter? I should have a sandcastle swinger like this. I don't know what this is. Hey. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Is the sandcastle bar the one up on the coast highway? Yeah, the one a couple of miles north. Uh, the MPs call it Girl's Town. Okay, okay, so I'm wrong. You better believe it, mister. Yeah, we, we better get out of here, Stan. You first? Huh? Oh, okay, yeah. Jerry, you sure there's not something you want to tell me? I want you to play tourist guide for me. Name it. Girls Town. Student of sociology. I like to see how the other half lives. Yeah. Draw one, Tony. Two. It's part of a bartender's job. Remembering names and faces, customers. I've only been in here a couple of times. That's all. Hi, Stan, baby. Hi, Stan, baby. I happen to have a face people remember. Agreed. Hey, uh... Where's all the action? Relax, any minute now. Hey, Tony, uh, that cute little redhead, uh, Liz, what's her name? What about it? Uh, I'd like my buddy to meet her. She should be coming in soon. You might luck out. Uh, isn't she going with some guy named Allison? Who knows? Last night she was in here with him. Uh, no, no, it was the night before last. Night before last? <laughs> uh, you sure she was in here with Allison the night before last? Uh, my friend's a buddy of Allison's. He wouldn't want to move in on a buddy. <laughs> Don't worry about it. They left early. Later she comes back alone, sits with another guy, takes off with him. Just like that, huh? No, there uh, was some guy that she used to see in here all the time. Lives in Fallbrook now. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Better move out, Lieutenant. Before the fleet moves in. Kind of unnerves the clean-cut Midwestern type, doesn't it? Maybe I better take care of it. Oh. Have faith, huh? I've got five that says you strike out. You're on. Excuse me, miss. I don't like to annoy pretty ladies, but um, 
The United States Marine Corps would like to buy you a drink. And what makes the Marine Corps suddenly so generous? It's a new policy. We're trying to soften that old blood and guts image. Cigarette? I'm Bill Rice. I'm Liz Sharp. What outfit are you with? Well, actually, I'm an undercover civilian. I... <laughs> Not with a suntan and crew cut. <laughs> oh, that drink helps. I had one of those real headachey days at the office. Mm. What kind of office? Oh, a land development company in Clemente. And before that? Around. Around here? Wow, what were you in real life? Some kind of quiz master? No, I'm, I'm just surprised to find a, a pretty girl here alone. I'm usually not that lucky. You live close by? Close by what? Here. Walking distance. Why? I was wondering, maybe I could give you a ride home. Maybe I've got a car. And if you haven't got a car, maybe I can give you a ride home. No other motives? There might be other motives. You might have it figured all wrong. You still haven't answered my question. I'm considering the pros and cons. That's nice music to consider by, shall we? You've been to dancing school. <laughs> Well, I just browsed through the tech manual. You mean they have a manual on that? On everything. Oh, uh, there's still a question before the house. What about your buddy at the bar? Come on, I'll show you what buddies are for. You have to go right in. Right in. Okay, I'll fix you one drink. That'll make us even. Another beer? Fine. Is that all you drink? Matter of economics. You're missing out on a whole beautiful world. Thank you. <sighs> nice place. You've been here long? Questions, questions, questions. You interest me. I'd be flattered if I didn't know why. No, I doubt if you do. Did Lieutenant Allison like it here, too? Listen, I don't like phonies. You came here saying you were one thing, and now... I said, could I give you a ride home, that's all. Let's say the reason for my being here is, uh, I'm defending Lieutenant Allison at his hearing. All right, let's say that. And let's say that I uh, thought you were with Jerry when he ran that man down. That makes you an accessory equally guilty. Is that what Jerry says? 
He never mentioned your name. Then let's leave it that way. I've got a couple of witnesses that say they saw you coming out of the Sandcastle bar with him night before last. And came right here. Can you testify he was here at the time of the accident? I'm not testifying to anything, mister. He's got the feeling that you kind of like him. How I feel is my business, and his. And if he can't prove where he was, it's his neck, do you know that? I said I'm not testifying to anything. Do you think I'm afraid to call you in? All right, call me in. And I'll say about 11.30, Jerry left, staggering drunk. That'll help him a whole lot, won't it? He left here at 11.30, smashed. No, no. And the accident no, no. happened a half hour later. I don't buy that, lady. In the first place, he wouldn't have thought you were Miss Purity herself if he spent his evenings here getting smashed. And if he did, I still don't believe he'd lie about the hit and run because of it. No, no. He had to think he was protecting something really worthwhile and wonderful in order to go to all the trouble to lie about where he was that night, lady. And nice guys won't embarrass nice girls. Which means Jerry wouldn't let you put me on the stand, Mr. Rice. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> you know, Jerry and I, we used to talk about politics, religion, about a lot of things. Maybe we should have talked about girls. Now, you take this place. It's, it's pretty nice. Must cost about $150 a month. That's a lot of money for a little old secretary, isn't it? I also spend a lot of money on clothes. I spend a lot of money, period. It's a cold world, and I scramble to enjoy what I can, just like you do. If a guy wants to give me a present, I take it. But only if it's really a gift. Better go before you say some word you'll be ashamed of later. Hmm. How about thanks for the drinks, Miss Sharp? And even if you should convince Jerry, I still wouldn't call me as a witness. I get confused under pressure. I say all sorts of things. All sorts of things about Jerry? No, about us. Oh. You know, those parties. It's the sort of thing that might not look too good on your record. <laughs> and I can get proof. My girlfriend, Peggy. I know Peggy, too, huh? You'll that find is... out you do. But I'm not making Peggy up. She's real. She lives next door. And she's a friend. She'll be glad to come in and testify, too. All right, after you went back to the apartment, what happened? Nothing happened. I fell asleep on the couch. I'd had my platoon out since 4.30 and I was beat. What time did you fall asleep? Right after we had dinner. Look, you know, I don't see what this has all to right, do with When did you find the car missing? I got up about 4.30. The car was gone. Was she there all the time? Yes. Jerry. Jerry, she was seen back at the Sandcastle bar at 10 o'clock. <laughs> you know, I don't know where you get these ideas. Well, the car had to be started with a key, right? Was it with you when you fell asleep? It was back in your pocket when you woke up, and she was back, too, huh? Jerry, what do I have to do after dark diagram for you? All parties to the hearing that were present when the board adjourned are again present, sir. The counsel for the accused has no opening statement. Instead, we call as a witness Miss Elizabeth Sharp. Sir, this witness has been called against my direct request. Is that true, Lieutenant Rice? Yes, sir. But it's also a fact that the only way to the truth is through this witness. I feel that Lieutenant Allison would be well advised to allow his counsel to proceed. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the evidence you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Take the uh, witness chair, please. State your full name, occupation, and residence, please. Elizabeth Ann Sharp, secretary. I live at 211 Sarah Road, Oceanside. Thank you. 
Lieutenant. Do you know the accused in this case? Yes. Will you point him out, please? Now, on the night of April 19th, you were with the accused, correct? Yes. Where? First at the Sandcastle Grill, and later at my apartment. And when did you arrive at your apartment? About 8 o'clock. And when did you leave your apartment? I didn't leave my apartment until the next day. And when did Lieutenant Allison leave your apartment? I think asking what time a man left my apartment is a highly personal question. And highly pertinent, too, Miss Sharp. I warned you that if you asked me that... You know, the other night you gave me testimony regarding this case. Now, if it's true, I'm inviting you to repeat it now, if you would like to. He left my apartment about 11 o'clock that evening. And what condition was he in? He was so drunk he could hardly stand. Lieutenant! I presume that you have some reason for this line of questioning. I do, sir. Well, I hope so. Proceed. Miss Sharp, I should like to ask you several questions. The car allegedly driven by the accused, which struck Mr. Gorson, was found abandoned in a San Clemente street about noon the following day. The accident was established as having occurred about midnight. So therefore, we must assume the car was abandoned sometime between 12.30 that morning and noon the following day. Isn't that logical? I suppose so. Objection. Counsel isn't harassing his own witness. Now, these questions are argumentative, sir, and we're wasting time. That's for the board to say, sir. We're aware of our obligations, Lieutenant. And government counsel's point is well taken. Will the board please bear with me a few more questions, sir? I have a valid and material point in mind. Proceed with your examination. Now, having left his car back in San Clemente, Lieutenant Allison needed transportation back to his apartment, which was some 20 miles away. Does that make sense, Miss Sharp? Does that make sense, Miss Sharp? Jerry, it isn't easy to live alone. I have to take care of myself. If the board please. What I meant is, I lied a few moments ago. You see, Lieutenant Allison fell asleep on my couch and didn't leave until the next morning. Not that anything happened. You see, I just didn't want anyone to think... You see, Miss Sharp, in order to determine exactly what time Lieutenant Allison did leave your apartment, we contacted all the cab drivers on duty in San Clemente that night. And we found there were only two of them, neither of which could remember the defendant. Objection. Counsel is attempting to introduce evidence, but if counsel would like to take the witness stand, I'll withdraw the statement. But in talking to the two cab drivers, Miss Allison, we did find out one thing. Do you know what that might be? I must point out to the board, this point of procedure is out of order. An attempt is being made... I would like to point out to the point board... Point of order, I would sir. like to point out to the board, sir, that the purpose of this hearing is to find out the truth. Now, I may not understand every rule, but I know that's the spirit behind all of this. None of which requires cross-talk between counsel. We'll hear you a bit further. Thank you, sir. Miss Sharp, did you leave the apartment that night? I told you the truth about Jerry. Isn't that enough for you? I intend on calling my next witness. Jerry was there all evening, and so was I. He'll swear to that. I intend on calling my next witness a Mr. Harold Marquez, one of the two cab drivers on duty that night in San Clemente. He just happens to be the gentleman in the jacket seated there in the... is I felt the car hit something, and I put on the brakes. I didn't see him. I, I swear I didn't see him. I looked back, and I saw this man lying in the road. I guess I got scared. All I could think of was to get away. I left the car in San Clemente, 
and I took a cab back to the apartment. His cab. Jerry was... Uh, Lieutenant Allison was still sleeping. So I slipped the keys back in his pocket. And when he woke up and found the car gone, he, he just figured it had been stolen. Is that what you wanted? No further questions. I have no further questions. Witness is excused. Lieutenant Markley? Yes, sir? You will notify the United States Attorney of this matter. Yes, sir, I will. The board now wishes to address a few words to the accused. Lieutenant Allison, you will please rise. I can only assume that your false statements to the Provost Marshal were prompted by some vague and misguided sense of gallantry. However, your behavior in this matter is certainly not to be condoned. Yes, sir. I realize I was wrong. In fact, I am directing Lieutenant Markley to send a complete report of this matter to your commanding officer. And I recommend that you be officially reprimanded. Yes, sir. However, as to the charges and specifications here, I will recommend that they be dismissed. I would also, at this time, like to commend both councils on their conduct. This investigation is now closed. I think... Well, maybe I'm glad it turned out this way after all. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I don't suppose you believe me. A girl gets so used to fighting for herself. Maybe it's just a reflex. Well, I guess they won't trust a guy like me with troops. Troops, maybe. Girls? No. Explain to them, they're different. You know, this is gonna sound kind of stupid. Yeah. Funny how close a girl may be to what a guy really wants, but still miss it so far. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> 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 